is Jeff Blenderman, Applications Engineer for Go Engineer. Today I'll be setting up a study that is available in SOLIDWORKS Plastics Professional. This study will include a large part with a hot runner system that has sequential valve gating. These valve gates can be mechanically activated to open and close at specific times and depending on their placement in a mold cavity, they can be used to control the filling profile of the plastic melt as it flows through the cavity, the location of weld lines, and also control the packing phase of the process. The part we'll be using today is a front bumper panel with the hot runner manifold modeled in as a multi-body part. So the first step that you do in any simulation study with SOLIDWORKS Plastic is set up your mesh. It's a few simple steps. We'll select our mesh and we see that with two bodies and a part we have two domains. So the first domain is your your cavity and the second domain is going to be your runner. So we select runner and assign the second domain as your runner. Our next step in the meshing process is to set our mesh size. Since this is a large part, I'm going to use a larger mesh to uh, actually speed up our process some. So we're setting our mesh 0.59 inches. I'm going to use the automatic um, refinement option as well, and then we'll mesh our part. Now that the part is meshed, we can see the areas where the automatic refinement has improved the mesh in certain spots. Our next step, we'll look at the mesh quality. If there's any issues with your mesh quality on your next pages, you're able to go in and edit and refine the mesh more and uh, get rid of any errors. So we're going to go on through. We're creating a tetrahedral mesh for the solid mesh, the internal mesh of the part. Once the solid mesh is through, the system will show you a section view so you can look at the mesh elements across the thickness of your part. Now with a couple more clicks in the setup, we can see in this page, we've got the cavity and runner system. In the next page, we have the final check. So now the system's creating the mesh on the part and also creating the plastic study folder within that part folder. Now that we've set our mesh, the next step in the process is to set our polymer. If we look at the polymer material parameters page, this data with the melt temperature, mold temperature, ejection temperature, all your viscosities. This is what the system utilizes when it sets up and runs the simulation. The fill settings come directly from this, so you don't have to enter any input in there. Your default settings will be from your material recommendations. So next we'll proceed on to defining the runner system. Since we did this as a multi-body part, and to find our runner element during the mesh process, it's already selected. So the next thing we'll have to do is tell the system that this is going to be a filled hot runner system. So if we select filled hot runner, it automatically selects that body, the entire body, as being the filled hot runner. So at this point, we could actually set the hot runner temperature, apply, and then so select the check mark, and this part is complete. It's a very simple step when you have modeled in the complete runner system. So now our next step in the process is to set our injection location for the manifold. So we'll select the end of the main runner system. We will set our gate size, add that location. So this sets our injection point, the main injection point for the material. Now the next step in the process, now that we've done that, we have to specify the end of the hot manifold drops as control valves. We select control valve here, and we have the option to automatically add the valves. When we select automatically add valves, 
the system will already see that there's nine runner cavity interferences. So it creates the valves automatically at the end of the hot drops. Very handy tool, very quick to do. So now that we've done that, we have to specify one of the valves to fill from zero to 100%. I'm gonna select this first valve and we're gonna set that valve to fill at 100%. Select volume ratio, 0 to 100%, and add the valve. So our next step is to go to each other of the other eight valves, and we're going to set them as automatic valves. So we'll go through that process one by one and set each of them as an automatic valve. And what this does in the system, it will automatically calculate when that valve is going to open or close during the flow analysis. So we don't have any settings that we have to do on that or any math that we have to do to figure out when these valve timings should happen. Now that we've set our injection location and specified our control valve, the next step is just to run the flow simulation. Once we select run, the analysis manager will show up on the page and give updates of the actual flow during the solve time. This is useful because if you see something you don't like in the flow, you can actually stop the process, make your changes, and start over without having to wait for the simulation to complete. Now that the analysis is run to completion, we can look at the animation of the flow front through each of the gates. If we zoom in on one of the gate areas, we'll be able to see the flow front approach and the gate open just before it reaches that point. This happens with all the gates through the whole system. An important piece of data that's created through this whole simulation, if we look in our flow text file, is the timing settings for each of the control valves. So this data can be taken and put into the controller for your hot manifold system and is a good starting point of your injection molding setup. So that concludes my video on the process of setting up a plastics flow simulation on a large part utilizing a hot runner manifold system with sequential valve gate controls. If you would like more information on the SolidWorks Plastics flow simulation software, please contact us at GoEngineer. This is Jeff Linderman, an Applications Engineer for Go Engineer. Thank you for watching this video.